KCRA TV, Channel 3, Sacramento. Channel 3 reports, where people make your news come first, with Bob Witten, Mary Richardson, Pete Lieben Good Sports, and Tom Duhane Weather. Now here's Bob Witten. It should have been an all-around pleasant day for California's former governor, Ronald Reagan. He announced in Washington before reporters today that he would challenge President Ford for the GOP presidential nomination next year. He then flew to Miami, Florida, where he was going to do some campaigning. It was there that a young man lunged out of the crowd pointing a pistol, a plastic pistol, at former Governor Reagan. The Secret Service agents jumped in, knocked the man to the ground, and disarmed him. He has since been identified as 20-year-old Michael Calvin of Pompano Beach, Florida. He said that he wanted Lynette Frome set free. Mr. Reagan appeared unruffled by the incident and continued on with his campaigning. Earlier at his news conference in Washington, Mr. Reagan was asked how his politics differed from those of President Ford. Here's what he said. Well, I have already said and have pledged to the people in my party and to others that I am going to abide by the 11th commandment, uh, which in, was given birth in California and which says thou shalt not speak ill of another Republican. I've made no difference of, or a list of the differences between us. I'll campaign on what I think should be done, the proposals that I would make, what I believe the philosophy of government should be. I'm sure the president will campaign in the same way and then it will be up to you and uh, to the American people to draw uh, the distinction where there are differences and to make their decision. In Washington, President Ford's campaign manager, Bo Calloway, said that he welcomed Mr. Reagan into the race next year, saying it will give the voters a clear-cut choice. He then accused Mr. Reagan of already starting to duck the issues. Senator Charles Percy of Illinois said that if Reagan does win the party nomination next year, the party faces a crushing defeat in the general elections. I think it would be a disaster for the Republican Party. I think uh, it would begin uh, the end of our effective role as a, as a, a, a part of the two-party system. Uh, we had a, a mortal blow in 64, and obviously the, the Democrats did in, in 72. Uh, I think this would just further accelerate the process where the Republican Party would be uh, uh, somewhat ineffective in a two-party system very much as we are in Cook County and have been for many years. President Ford's California campaign chairman said today that the president will defeat Mr. Reagan even in California. But Attorney General Evel Younger, who's a Republican, said the Reagan challenge will weaken Mr. Ford's chances in the general election. There's no way a Reagan campaign can be conducted without, in effect, uh, being critical of, of the Ford administration. You can't run against somebody and say uh, he's doing a wonderful job. The only way you can challenge the incumbent is to say he's not doing things as well as I would do them. Uh, I don't care how politely Governor Reagan says that. He's in effect uh, criticizing the president and of course to some extent that that's going to hurt. There's an interesting side note to Mr. Reagan's getting into the political race officially today. The FCC has ruled that any television station now showing old Ronald Reagan movies will be liable for equal time demands by other Republican candidates. The same applies to any television series that Mr. Reagan appeared in. The trial of Lynette Frome resumes tomorrow after a four-day delay over disputed evidence. Defense attorney John Verga plans to call members of the prosecution team to the stand when the testimony gets underway. Meanwhile, Walter Scott, the brother of sports activist Jack Scott, says he's received a number of death threats for his alleged role in cracking the Hearst case. Scott has, at one time or another, said that he worked with the authorities, also denied taking any part in the investigation. He said the persons making the threats have a strong affinity with the FSLA. One reason that more and more young couples are living together out of wedlock appears to be that social standards have changed. In the second of her three-part series on unwedded bliss, KCRA's Ginger Rutland samples some local attitudes. Oh, I don't disapprove. As long as they, uh, they're on the road in their relationships, uh, I'd probably do it, but it wouldn't be, no, uh, it wouldn't be a, just a uh, fling. I don't have any strong feelings either way. I think it's fine if that's what they want to do. Everybody should live their own life. I think I have 
become accustomed to the the trend and uh, there was a time when I might have said yes but I believe now that uh, there's so many cases of it that maybe it's better for the young people even older people admittedly it was a very unscientific survey but not one person interviewed condemned unwedded relationships although surveys indicate most Americans do not think marriage is obsolete it's not as healthy an institution as one might think while there have been 4,048 marriages in Sacramento County since the beginning of the year, there have been 4,223 divorces. So marriage is no guarantee of permanence, but unwedded relationships have their pitfalls too. It uh, gives a sense of non-permanence so that uh, people can move in and out of such relationships uh, fairly easily which tends to then downgrade the value of the relationship. They don't put as much into it, they don't work as hard to make a relationship function well and so forth. Despite the high incidence and widespread acceptance of unwedded relationships, few are willing to discuss their own relationships openly. Tomorrow, we meet a couple who did agree to be filmed and to talk frankly about unwedded bliss. Ginger Rutland, KCRA News, Sacramento. And like those cases, homosexuality doesn't quite carry the same social stigma that it has in years past. But there are problems. For example, Elijah Marsh, an electronics technician from Palo Alto, says that he's being denied an industrial security clearance by the Department of Defense because of his gay activities. He says he's fighting the matter with that government office. Yes, I am. In the statement of reasons, I think there were probably about 14 points, all dealing with my homosexual activities, indicating that, that in their opinion, they did believe that I was untrustworthy, unreliable, and subject to blackmail. I really don't think it's discrimination. We don't discriminate against them any more than we have to do against any other type of applicant. And uh, as far as they claim there's a per se rule excluding homosexuals, that is another fallacy. Coming up, our consumer reporter goes shopping for Thanksgiving Day, and Tom Duhane's going to report on some pretty severe weather. Is there something new at Lamco? Yes, indeed. Lamco has a new appliance store now in Rancho Cordova. All Lamco stores feature these dependable KitchenAid appliances. Come to any of Lamco's four stores during our grand opening and register for a free half steer, plus other free gifts. During this grand opening, you save up to $30 on installation of a built-in KitchenAid dishwasher or save $17.76 on this portable dishwasher. Lamco with two stores in Sacramento, one in Carmichael, and now in Rancho Cordova. Took Krupps to Joplin through the pass, got there and back on a gallon of gas. Drove to the mountains to hunt and fish, took all our gear and our hound dog, Tish. Overhead cam and four-speed stick of hauling these plants ain't no trick. Me and my Dotson don't waste no time, just keep on moving on down the line. Dotson Little Hustler, America's number one selling small truck. See and test drive the versatile Dotson pickup at Turner Dotson, 1761 Fulton, Sacramento's Dotson headquarters. In 1836, he moved like a shadow through the forests of Montana and Canada. As a warrior, he was terrifying. For the white man's treachery, he kidnapped a beautiful girl and young boy. And for almost a year, he outwitted the mountain men who were chasing him. His name was Winterhawk. Now Charles B. Pierce brings this legend to the wide screen as one of the epic adventure films of all time. Winterhawk, rated PG. Now playing at theaters and drive-ins everywhere. Check your local newspaper. The cost of living climbed another seven-tenths of one percent last month. That's the third largest increase this year. Food prices were largely responsible for that increase. So today, KCRA's consumer reporter Mary Richardson did some shopping to find out just how much a Thanksgiving dinner is going to cost us. That's right. Food prices were up another one and three tenths percent last month, according to the Labor Department. So to find out just what effect that would have on your Thanksgiving dinner, we went shopping for an average family of four in a Sacramento supermarket, and we didn't scrimp too much. Starting in the produce department, we chose some carrots and celery and radishes to make a colorful relish tray, and sweet potatoes and white onions that we'll need for vegetable dishes. Of course, no Thanksgiving dinner is complete without the cranberry sauce, so we bought a bag of fresh cranberries and some navel oranges to make a relish in the blender. The turkey is the major expense.
Fresh hens were selling for 69 cents a pound. But before we shopped, we talked to KCRA's home economist, Chris Brune. Chris said we could save money on a frozen turkey. And in taste tests, c tasters couldn't tell the difference between fresh and frozen turkeys. So we spent a little over $6 for a 10-pound frozen hen. In the dairy department, we got extra butter, sour cream, and cheese, and spent another $4. We bought just the staple items an average family will need. If you add a good bottle of wine or some flowers for your table, the bill will be appreciably higher. When we got to the cash register, our total was $19.50. Not too bad when you consider there should be plenty of leftovers for another dinner and maybe some turkey soup and sandwiches. It's not bad at all. What are you going to do with I all the food so. now that you've got it all Now that we up? got it all, we took it over to the Smud Home Living Center and we're going to cook it tomorrow and do another story for our viewers Monday night on how to save time in your kitchen. Get in there the night before and get most of your dinner prepared and then you'll have more time to visit with your guests on Thanksgiving sure, Day. great. Then, then what are you going to do with then it? Then what we're going to do with it is bring all the food back here for the newsroom. Early Thanksgiving upstairs. One 10-pound hen for that group upstairs. Well, everybody gets a finger. Oh, about that much. <laughs> Somebody better bring the wine. Thank you, Mary. We look forward to that. The stock market closed down a bit today. The Dow Jones average closing at 843. That was down almost five points. An average share on the New York Exchange lost 12 cents, and it lost one on the American. Today's volume was 16.4 million shares. Here's a quick look at some of the people making the news tonight. Marijuana possession charges have been dropped against Linda McCartney, the wife of the former Beatle. Is that him or her? Well, anyway, she was arrested earlier this year in Southern California after being stopped for a traffic violation. She underwent psychiatric counseling as a condition for dismissal of the charges. The body of Spain's Generalissimo Franco has been removed from the hospital where he died last night. It's been moved to a chapel in suburban Madrid. He will lie in state starting tomorrow. The funeral for the 82-year-old dictator will be held on Sunday. British newspapers say that Caroline Kennedy's mother, Jackie Onassis, has started to apply the skids to her daughter's social life. It seems Caroline has been given, uh, given the word, rather, to slow down on all the parties and start taking her art studies more seriously. Donald Rumsfeld has been sworn in as Secretary of Defense, and he inspected an honor guard at the Pentagon after the ceremony. He was confirmed earlier this week without opposition. It's time for the weather. Here's our weatherman, Tom Duhane. Temperatures uh, were only showing about a 10 degree difference between lows and highs, speaking of lows and highs. And uh, back in the Midwest, the temperatures today in nine states uh, did not reach out of the 20s or 30s as the first major snowstorm of the season is causing blizzard-like conditions, especially back in the Midwest. Here was the scene today around North Platte, Nebraska, which was one of the first cities to be hit by the blizzard, which is moving toward the northeast. Snowfalls of up to a foot and one half. Winds gusting to 65 miles per hour have been reported. The howling winds are causing drawing, uh, blowing and drifting snow, reducing the visibilities to near zero in many areas. Roads and highways have been closed by five to six foot snow drifts in many locations. And the blizzard warnings have been continued through this evening for parts of eastern Nebraska, portions of Iowa, South Dakota, Minnesota, and also northern Wisconsin. And Harry Geis will have more to say about that storm later on. Now to the west coast weather. This was the little weather front that moved through during the night, which dropped two hundredths of an inch of rainfall here in Sacramento, a very light amount. It's moving through during the day, and already we've got brisk northwest winds behind it. But the air is not very dry. Earlier this week, it was nice and dry with dew points in the 20s. The dew points tonight are in the 40s. And uh, as we have calmer conditions during the night that could well lead to morning fog, we see another storm which could begin to affect the weather over the weekend, probably Saturday night or Sunday. Temperatures today were about like yesterday with a 59 in Sacramento, but Stockton was just a shade uh, warmer than the previous day with a 59, 53 up around uh, Marysville, Yuba City, 51 at uh, Red Bluff. And this is a 32 today up around Mount Shasta City. Temperatures on the cool side along the coast. 41 at Tahoe, the temperatures moderating up in the Sierra Nevada. 55 reported today from Yosemite. 40 up around Truckee, they went to five above zero last night. 67 in Los Angeles and San Diego, a nice day with only light smog. And the warmest temperature I could find on the southern desert today was a 71. That was around thermal. I think Palm Springs was only about 68, so rather cool this time of year. 67 percent, the relative humidity in Sacramento. The winds are out of the northwest at 16, but we do expect them to die down during the night. Our current pressure is nice and high, 30.23. And that brings us to the forecast for Sacramento, Stockton, and Concord. 
We're expecting uh, mostly fair weather with some high clouds beginning to appear Friday afternoon. Patches of morning fog and low clouds. Temperatures tonight not quite as cold as the past few nights with, uh, oh, down between 36 to 40. And then highs tomorrow right around the 60 degree mark. Hmm. Thank you, Tom. Oh, incidentally, I asked Kerry Geis about Thanksgiving weather. And what did he say? Mm-hmm. <laughs> he says that's one of those types I don't know. So I guess we'll do mm-hmm until we get there. It's one of those forecasts that we go, what you see is what you get. Uh, you can't go wrong with that. <laughs> we have more. We're going to get, oh, did we lose you there, Pete? He'll be back and more news in a moment. At North Country Dodge, you can lease purchase a brand new 1975 dart swinger for only $63.50 a month plus tax with 10% down. Your new Dart has a V8 engine, automatic transmission, power steering, power brakes, and air conditioning. And the tall trader will let you drive it away today for only 10% down and $63.50 per month plus tax on a 48-month lease purchase plan. That's at North Country Dodge, Arden Wayne Bell in Sacramento. Get super buys at Ward Super Sale. What kind of color TV can you get right now for just $499? How about a 100% solid-state modular chassis? Largest picture tube on the market. Speakers on both sides of the screen. Easy one-button tuning. All for just $499 right now at Ward's. If you can find a color TV with these features for less money, buy it. Airlines, the only way to fly. That twice delayed explosion of a hydrogen warhead at the site in uh, Nevada went off on schedule this morning. It carved out a cavern 2,000 feet below the surface of the desert, shook things some 80 miles away. The Atomic Energy Commission officials say there was no radiation leakage. The blast was said to be about 50 times more powerful than the bomb that leveled Hiroshima. Despite President Ford's objections, the Senate has gone ahead with plans to make public a sensitive report on CIA assassination plots. It details at least eight schemes to kill Cuban Premier Fidel Castro and one to murder Congolese leader Patrice Lumumba. The report was released by the Senate Intelligence Committee and was made public despite efforts by the administration to keep it secret. The committee chairman, Frank Church, talked about the report today. The committee does not believe that the acts which it has examined represent the real American character. They do not reflect the ideals which have given the people of this country and of the world hope for a better, fuller, fairer life. We regard the assassination plots as aberrations. Sacramento Regional Transit agreed last night to eliminate some early morning and late evening bus runs in a two-pronged effort to cut costs. The other measure is expected to be a fare increase, and that could come early next year. The service cutback is expected to come January 3rd. The measures are expected to save about $200,000 a year. Here's a quick look at some of the stories we're following around the metropolitan area tonight. United Way officials say they intend to keep the current fundraising campaign going until December the 11th. With about 76% of the goal reached so far, it amounts to about $2.7 million. It's been disclosed that the price tag for the temporary state capital will run about $800,000. It's thought the modular structures will be finished in February. They will sit on the lawn of the capital. The parents of two boys said to be involved in the death earlier this year of six-year-old Harriet Wiley of North Highlands have filed a $1.6 million lawsuit against the county and the county sheriff, Dwayne Lowe. The boys were taken into custody on that murder charge, although they were later released. The suit alleges that the boys suffered physical and mental injury. After three and a half weeks, a jury in the Farrell's crash suit, and that trial has been selected. Eight alternate jurors will be selected tomorrow. Judge Edward Garcia has been chosen as next year's presiding judge of the Sacramento Municipal Court. He will be responsible for making the assignments and overseeing the operations of the court system. Directors of the Sacramento Municipal Utility District held their regular monthly meeting today. 
One issue discussed was the Rancho Seco nuclear plant, which has been shut down for repairs since June 30th. A SMUD spokesman said the company has set a target date for resuming the plant's operations. This is for the purchase of a specialized machine to a lapping machine. Currently, we are cleaning up our, our uh, systems out there and putting the, sort of the last uh, pieces of equipment together. Uh, this should be completed now by the end of this month, and uh, then with the final water chemistry and everything cleaned up, uh, we should be producing small quantities of power by the middle of December, and we hope to be at our full power out there by the end of the month. Uh the Giants' staff has been wiped out. Pete Liebengood has the details in just a moment. This man is wearing a $170 suit from... He could have bought the same suit without the label for $69 at Plato. Gotcha. Yes, Plato, the store that sells only top quality menswear. The same fine clothing you'll find in some of Sacramento's leading stores, except we pull out the label. And when we do that, you save 20 to 40% off those other store prices. Pay for the suit, not the label, at Plato, 2820 Arden Way. When people come to Denio's Farmer's Market, it's for more than just fresh lettuce from the field and newly picked grapes and ripe red apples. They come for... Mister, the horse hasn't been born yet that can wear out this saddle. Be careful now. The coffee's hot. And the Denio boys saying... Can I help you, ma'am? And, oh yes, Teehee the Clown blowing up balloons for the kids. They come because it's a fun day for the entire family, the old-fashioned way where people are glad to see you. Denio's Farmer's Market every weekend in Roseville. When the gentleman enters, all eyes turn his way. And everyone can see he lives a good life every day. And when he looks at a lady, she can feel it deep inside. Cause it's a look that shows the gentleman knows how to keep her satisfied. Black tie, men splash on and cologne. Gentlemen are requested to wear black tie to all. This is where Wisp Pride ages its fine cheddar cheese. We don't disturb it until its cheddary taste is ready. Then this fine aged cheddar is hand trimmed and custom blended with other selected cheddars. They go into every crock and refill we make. Try Wisp Pride for snacks and parties. Rich, robust, cold packed cheese food that spreads. From Wisp Pride, made with aged cheddar and a lot of pride. What's in a name? Well, if you're a giant, you can be kicked right out. That's right. The San Francisco Giants is beginning to look like uh, it's the end for them as far as the Horace Stoneham ownership is concerned. The theory is that they'll be sold in about a week. As soon as Stoneham gets out of a Stanford Medical Center, he's going in for abdominal surgery uh, today or tomorrow, and they figure that they'll make the announcement after that, and it'll probably be Robert Lurie, a group headed by him. He's a San Francisco financier. He'll probably take over the club, so they may stay in San Francisco. We know this because Wes Westrom and the entire Giants coaching staff was dismissed today. That would be Joey Amalfitano, Andy Gilbert, Don McMahon, Ossie Virgil, all given their papers, and that just uh, clears the way for new ownership to come in and hire their own people. So the Giants, uh, the change is on. It's just a matter of time now. The big game is Saturday, 11.30. We'll carry it, 11.30 p.m. here. Uh, tape delayed, Cal and Stanford, and you got to look for guys' names like Joe Roth, Chuck Muncie, Guy Benjamin from Stanford, but Cal had better watch out for a guy by the name of Ron Inge, number nine for Stanford. Here you see him in action. October 25th against Washington State. The Cougars with a porous defense, but uh, believe it or not, they scored a few touchdowns last weekend. Eng is from Stockton, St. Mary's High School. He's a junior, six feet, 200 pounds. He can catch a pass and run. Now watch this next run coming up. This is pretty. I don't care who you happen to be for. You gotta appreciate a good run when you see one, Bob Whitten. Okay. 77 yards. Keep your eye on number nine. Well, he's coming up here, I guarantee you. 6.17 remaining in this particular quarter. Number nine, Ron Inge will get the ball and go 77 yards to his left side. He had 153 yards total rushing on this particular day, and that was the ninth best anyone's ever done in Stanford. Ninth best day rushing. And there he goes. Touchdown. Bo Schembechler at Michigan is right out of the Woody Hayes mold. He coached for him. They're playing this weekend for who will have the right to go to the Rose Bowl. But Bo, well, he had his problems. Uh, he called a press conference today, then walked out of it because a UPI photographer was there. Earlier in the week, he wanted the UPI photographer's camera 
because he, the photographer, was in a building two stories up taking pictures of the Michigan practice. The photographer didn't want to give up his camera, so he called the police for a little assistance on the mail. Well, they got that straightened out, but Bo wouldn't talk today with the photographer on hand. Anyway, before this incident, Schembechler was talking about the OSU game. Here's what he had to say about it. Honest. Defenses. Offensively, with Griffin, Green, and so forth all the years, <clears throat> it would seem this year they, they're able to do more things than they could be purple. Well, I think they're running the fullback a little bit more, and uh, they're throwing more than they have uh, in the past. Um, but uh, it's a typically... Um, Ohio State type of uh, offense, uh, um, although they're, as you have said, they're a little more diversified in that they're going to throw a little bit more and run the fullback a little bit more. Defensively, you have great speed, but they have great size on you on that offensive line. Well, <clears throat> that's true. Their line is, uh, is strong, but, uh, you know, ours is quick, and, um, and uh, we rely a lot on our quickness because we're not a, a very big team uh, from a, a defensive standpoint. But uh, I think the important thing is that uh, we're not as uh, weak physically up there, even though we're quick. And that was quick. That's quick. We'll be right back. There's only one source for genuine Roto-Rooter sewer and drain service, so when you have drain trouble, there's only one company to look for. Roto-Rooter! People should know best. Because you'll love GE's good sounds. See General Electric's AM FM digital clock radio with a snooze alarm. Best priced at $37.84. Some places you pay up to $49.95. Or this AM FM portable that operates in both AC and DC. Best. Because when America wants value, America knows best. Mrs. Butterworth? Yes? Tell me, what's the secret of your syrup recipe? Well, my syrup is made with real butter. It's very rich. And look how thick it is. See how long it takes Mrs. Butterworth's to drip down this stack? My syrup's got to be thick to pour this slowly. Now watch how fast the leading syrup runs. Actually, Mrs. Butterworth's is twice as thick as the other syrup. Mmm, thick. I never thought of that. I did. Meet Ernie Cadell of Cadell Chevrolet, Roseville. There are a lot of things to think about when you go out to buy a new car. How much you're going to spend is one, and where is another? Here are the people who will sell you the car, our people. Frank Bianchi has been at Cadell since 1956. Ron Love has been with us for 10 years. All these folks have been at Cadell's for a long time. We think that's the important reason you should buy your new car or truck from Cadell's. Come on in and meet the family. It's Cadell's for sure. Call three for action. We can help solve your problems. 766-7741. Now Thursdays, tonight, 5 to 6.30 p.m. too. Israeli and Lebanese troops reportedly traded shots across the border today in the first clash in more than two weeks. The Israeli military command said there were no casualties in that fighting. Tonight, Mort Krim has a comment on a note written by a man who passed away some 30 years ago. He thinks you may be interested in what he had to say. Mort? An antique dealer opened the old 18th century pendulum clock he had just purchased, and inside he found a message written some 30 years earlier by a Polish Jew marked for death by Hitler. The message, a sort of last testament, placed there as the footsteps of the dreaded Gestapo told Gory Switokreski he was about to meet the fate which earlier had claimed his entire family. But there was no self-pity, no bitterness. In fact, the note was remarkable for its selflessness and compassion. Because the message expresses great concern for the well-being of others. Gori's friend, Franz, a woodman, drafted into the German army. Poor Franz, the note said, so good, so peaceable, drafted like too many other of my countrymen in order to kill. He wrote of a woman, Anna, who had given him refuge, a woman he refused to leave even to save his own life. The note might well have been a dramatic documentation of the Nazi horror. Gory surely had seen enough of that. Instead, his writing was a tribute to what Eleanor Roosevelt called the ultimate shining nobility of the human spirit, a gentle message from an obscure, unknown man with an almost unpronounceable name, and who, like Anne Frank, despite everything, still believed in the goodness of people. This is Mort Krim. Coming up in just a moment, the NBC Nightly News with full reports on world and national stories. On the 6.30 edition of Channel 3 Reports, a look at one of the few heroes to come out of the Watergate scandal.
John Rhyme reports on an angry hearing on a controversial ruling concerning the New Maloney's Dam. And Steve Swat takes a look at Ronald Reagan in retrospect and what his candidacy for the presidency means. I'll be back at 6.30, now to New York and John Chancellor. <laughs>